Hello, I'm JW. This time we're going to have a look at AFDDs, or arc vault detection devices. Now these things are not particularly new in themselves, but they are certainly a new thing for the UK, and mainly because until the 1st of January this year, which is 2019, they weren't actually listed or mentioned in the wiring regulations, and therefore because it's not listed there or mentioned, nobody actually bothered to fit the things, and because nobody bothered to fit the things, manufacturers didn't generally bother selling the things in the UK, or at least not in any kind of big way. But uh, from 2019, the uh, things are actually mentioned in there, albeit in a fairly small way. So uh, surprise, surprise, manufacturers are now turning these things out and uh, promoting them as much as they can. And we've got an example of one here. This is an Eaton branded item, but uh, they're all going to be fairly similar from the various manufacturers. So uh, we're going to have a look at this one, also see how it works and actually wire the thing up. And also see what uh, AFDs are actually for and where they're intended to be used. Now let's just have a look at what we've got here. This is a sort of a three-in-one device, as it got here on the side. And basically this is an MCB, or one that uh, trips on short circuit and overload. In this case it's a 60 amp Type B. And it's also an RCD, so that detects whether there's an imbalance between the line and neutral there. And it's a 30 milliamp Type, fairly standard deal. And also it's got the AFDD functionality as well. So basically it's a three-in-one device. And uh, this is intended to supply a single circuit. Now the first thing about these is it's a very large device. It's a triple width item. It's double pole, but it's basically line and neutral, so a single phase uh, circuit there. So this one we have a 16 amp device. Uh, the RCD current is uh, 30 milliamps, so again, pretty standard there. And uh, so just the two terminals at the bottom for the supply and the two out at the top for the load, so it's just line and neutral. Now this one comes with a rather cryptic uh, set of instructions, but uh, nevertheless, uh, let's have a look at those. Now this uh, rather bizarre setup here is exactly how you're supposed to use the thing. So basically, uh, you can either put the uh, neutron line either way round into the bottom, so it doesn't actually matter. You'll see they're both marked line here on the actual device, but uh, it doesn't actually matter apparently which way around those go, so neutron one and line into the other. But what does matter is you've got the actual supply going in the bottom, so this is basically your transformer or where the supply is coming from, and then your load is connected to the top. So uh, unlike a lot of other devices, this is going to matter whether you've connected the top and bottom, the load or the supply, and of course it's actually marked load on the thing as well. So uh, supply in the bottom, load out on the top, and uh, as we can see here, that's the two sort of approved connections, and putting the load in and the uh, supply the other round is uh, not permitted, or basically it's not going to work correctly. And fairly obviously, if you just connect, say, the line through, it's only not neutral. It's not going to work anyway, because, of course, the RCD thing isn't going to work anyhow, because it's going to be imbalanced. And it's fairly likely it wouldn't work at all anyway, because, of course, uh, it's going to need a line in neutral to power whatever electronics are contained within. So uh, that's that, and then in terms of the actual device being used, on this side we can see uh, it's got this indicator here, which is this uh, little panel here, and this is actually an LED. So you've got various different states that it can be in. Basically it's green in normal operation. If it's not lit up at all then it's busted, and if it flashes alternately red and yellow, well, it's busted as well. And in the actual proper documents of this we'll see later, basically this is supposed to be an electrician person, and this is a phone, so you're supposed to call it the manufacturer or call some electrician or somebody basically to come and replace the device, because if this happens, it's basically uh, no good. And then we've got down here the uh, types of faults and things that it can detect. And this is kind of important, because if this thing tripped, then of course uh, the fact it's gone off doesn't really mean anything, because it could have gone off for one of the three things here, so because I've got a short circuit or overload, an RCD issue, or the AFDD part as well. So. This is actually an indicator to hopefully indicate what the actual cause for the trip was. Now, of course, when the thing goes off, this isn't going to be illuminated, but the idea here is that when it's tripped, you can then turn it back on, and then this will uh, illuminate in one of several possible states, and that will then tell you what the cause of the previous trip was. So what we've got down here, then, is the uh, green one, basically, is saying it's going to be the RCD functionality, so the uh, current was greater than the... Uh, actual tripping current on the thing, which in this case 30 milliamps, so green is for that. And then we've got yellow, which will flash between one and six times to indicate what type of fault was detected. So we've basically got uh, one is a uh, 
series arc, so it's basically where a conductor is broken. Two flashes is also a series arc, but it's something with a dimmer or something similar on the end, like a speed controller for a motor. Again, the same sort of break within one conductor. Three is a parallel arc between, say, line and neutral. In theory, that could also be between line and earth, but of course, in reality, the RCD is going to uh, trip on that anyway. And then we've got four, which is uh, the supply voltage is greater than 270 volts, so that would be an over-voltage situation. Five is something that's overheated, greater than 115 degrees centigrade. And six is pretty much the same as the red and yellow flashing up there, and it may seem it's broken, so uh, at least it gives you some indication. And of course, this is really important, let's say if this just popped off and it was in your house, and this wasn't here, you would have absolutely no idea what the problem was, and therefore it would be incredibly difficult to uh, determine what to do next. And in common with these uh, circuit breakers from Eaton, it's got the uh, coloured indication here, so we've got the red there when it's on, and of course the uh, green in the off position. And we have a test button at the top here, and in terms of the AFDD part, this is really the only test that it has. There's no testing equipment you can uh, fix up to this to test that particular functionality. You could, of course, test this with a normal RCD tester. But in terms of the AFDD part, it's just press the button and then does it trip, of course, and uh, if not, well, obviously it's bust. And uh, most of these, uh, probably including this one, have some sort of self-test thing built in so that when it's sort of powered on in normal use, there's some kind of testing thing goes on with inside the thing. Basically, this is just a big box of electronics. Now, I'll just wire this thing up here so we can at least see how it works. So we've got line and neutral going in the bottom. Uh, line on the left in this case, but as we saw it doesn't actually matter, particularly on this one, it's either way around. And then load coming up the top, and the load is just this socket here, just this uh, double thing, cable just goes down the back there, and the earth course just connects on the side, because obviously there's no earth connection to this, and of course that also means there's none of those stupid white functional earth leads to connect anywhere, and uh, what we're going to do is just uh, try some various things in here and see if we can get this thing to trip. But uh, first of all, we'll just turn it on and see what actually happens. So the power is on, so if we turn it on, we should see uh, the green indicator here. And according to the instructions, it should cycle through the colours there to show that it is actually working correctly. So, so there we go. So we had the red, amber and green, and there was a bit of a gap. And then it's got the green, which signifies normal operation. So uh, it seems to be working as expected, and we can see the red uh, mechanical indicators in the window, obviously showing that it is on. One thing I don't like about this is the uh, test button, which is here, is incredibly close to the position of the actual uh, switch there. It's... Yeah, there's a tiny little gap between it, but literally it's right on the uh, actual uh, actuator lever there, which is not uh, particularly wonderful. But anyway, that is now on. If we press the uh, test button, then it does trip. If we turn it on again, it just goes through the same cycle as before, so no real surprises there. Now, as you see, this has three things in one, and the first of those things is the MCB, or the Overload and Short Circuit uh, Tripping Function. Now, we can actually try and test this out, because uh, what we've got over here is one of these yellow sight transformers. This is a 3 kVA model, and because this is just essentially a big coil of wire inside, when it first switches on, it appears as essentially a short circuit, until the magnetic field is increased inside, and then it uh, obviously just shows there's a very small load. So now I happen to know that uh, from using this, if you plug it into a 16 amp circuit, most of the time it will trip the circuit breaker, and it even does add on 20s in a few cases. So uh, if we actually plug this in and switch on, then uh, hopefully we can get the thing to trip there. So let's plug into the uh, socket there, and yeah, unsurprisingly, uh, it trips that straight away. Uh, that's it, that's just because of the uh, switch on surge there. So that part of it obviously works, not that that's uh, entirely surprising, but just kind of confirmation of something we uh, already knew. So as you can see there, that has tripped to the off position, and uh, nothing else on the front there. And this should be the same as we had before when it goes back on, because this is only used for the uh, actual electronic part, that's purely a uh, mechanical trip. So no difference to turning it off on the lever. So. Yeah, turn it on again, it goes back to what we had before with the green light. So, uh, yes, it does work for the uh, circuit breaker function. Again, hardly a surprise because obviously that's what it's designed to do. Now, because this is an RCBO, it should obviously test uh, with the RCD tester in the usual way. So, uh, got the uh, plug here, and this is actually a Type A RCBO, so we're going to be using uh, Type A as it says on the uh, display. 
might be uh, that easy to see there, but uh, type A anyway. Now, uh, in theory, we could just plug this into the uh, socket and just test away, but unfortunately there's a problem here, because although we're going to be testing this, the uh, supply to this thing, which comes from this lead here, and the supply to this particular building, has an RCD on it already, so if we're just going to plug in there and test, it's pretty inevitable we're going to trip this and possibly the one up the way as well. So what we can do instead is, rather than connect the earth here, is to uh, dispose with the earth here, and instead connect a different lead there. So we can get our line of neutral from the uh, socket outlet here, and we turn it on obviously, and uh, then we can get the earth from the neutral on the incoming supply, and that will create the relevant imbalance across this device, but then any upstream device won't show the imbalance because as far as the upstream device shows it's just a low between line and neutral, so that will avoid tripping the uh, device further up. So uh, that's a cunning plan to uh, at least get the thing to operate. In the real world this isn't going to be used very often, the only place this is likely to come across is in a caravan park, where it's quite often the case that your caravan has an RCD in it, and then the supply on the site also has an RCD as well. So if you want to test the RCD in your caravan with one of these, you're probably going to have to do something like this, because if you don't, chances are you're going to trip the one on the site supply as well, which obviously isn't particularly convenient and really doesn't prove anything. But uh, anyway, that's uh, what we've got there. So uh, just turn on the power and then we'll just give it a, a quick test. We'll just try it on the times one and uh, zero degree thing there just to start with. So power's on there, just turn it off while I uh, attach to the uh, cabling there. So uh, in theory this should trip. This is just your 30 milliamp uh, job here. Yep, sure enough uh, it obviously does. So uh, that uh, seems reasonable there. So just see what time that tripped in. 142 milliseconds, so that's certainly on the high side of acceptable. Now in theory that is a pass because the maximum is uh, 200 milliseconds on the times one, but uh, nevertheless that certainly is in the uh, high end of that. So let's uh, just try through all of the uh, things here, and for this we can use the automatic function on this uh, device here. So if we just go to auto, that will cycle through the six tests and we'll need to reset the device obviously between. So it's going to get a test at half on the 0 and 180, 1 on the 0 and 80, and times 5 on the 0 and 180 as well. So half the current is going to be 15 milliamps in this case, if this is a 30 milliamp deal. Times 1 is a 30 milliamp, and the times 5 of course is 150 milliamps. And the 0 and 180 refers to the point in the AC waveform where the thing actually trips. And of course that can affect the uh, tripping time because of course it depends where it's going to trip on the particular cycle, so where the fault occurs can have some impact on the actual trip time. So same connections as we had previously, and if we turn on... Now the first two tests shouldn't trip at all, and then we should have four which do, and then we can just look at the uh, times once we've finished. So uh, get that underway. So those are fine, and this one should trip which it does, just reset, and then these are the times 5, and this should then stay on completely, and as we see the uh, indicators come on as we had before. So that part of it certainly is functional, so uh, what we'll do then is just uh, have a look at the results there. So here's our test results here, this is the last one which we saw, and we can scroll through these with the uh, Thing here. So the first test was uh, zero and half the current, so that was 50 milliamps. Didn't trip, it's greater than two seconds, so uh, that's pretty much what you would want. And again, the second one, which is on the 180, again, did not trip, again, that's what you'd want. And on times one, at zero degrees, trip time was 134.1 milliseconds. Again, that's certainly at the high end of these things, but say 200 would be the uh, maximum, so again, it's well within that. On the 180, it trips 130.9, so again, a minor difference there due to the point of the uh, waveform there. And then on the times 5, which for this will be applying 150 milliamp current, we can see the trip time was 34.5 milliseconds, and then on the other side of the waveform it was 34.7. So again a minor difference there due to that one. And as we uh, may not have seen before, it's the Type A RCBO here. So you've got the little two symbols there, the AC and then the pulsating as well. And the figure down here would be the touch voltage in the case of a fault occurring, so uh, pretty low there. 
And obviously we're testing a 30 milliamp RCBO here, and all leads are used obviously. And we're testing the time as in delta T rather than the actual uh, tripping whatever. And the limit would be 50 volts as in if it took uh, too long or the uh, actual touch voltage would be more than 50 volts then this thing wouldn't actually do the test. Now let's try this with an actual load. So I've got the uh, plug here. This is that uh, Belling Champion heater, the uh, silver one which we've seen uh, various other times, so uh, a fairly resistive load. So let's just plug in here and uh, switch on. So yep, the heater is uh, heating away. It's out of shot obviously, but uh, nevertheless it's doing its thing and the thing has not tripped, which is what I'd expect. And in theory, if these switches were worn out and uh, busted, they may arc a bit. Now this is quite a new socket, so it shouldn't have any problems. So we can certainly turn on and off there without any difficulty. And we probably can't get these to arc, because say this is an MK socket, so a decent one. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, try there. But yeah, nothing really going on there, so uh, unsurprisingly the thing does not trip. Now let's see if we can get it to trip with some kind of arc going on. Uh, what we're going to use for that is this test block here, which uh, is just a cliff quick test. So we've got the uh, socket there as before, goes into this thing here. This is then connected to this extension bar, and then we've got that same electric heater plugged in there. And uh, these things apparently do need a certain amount of load to uh, detect an arc, obviously. So I'll turn the heater to its uh, full setting. That's in the region of uh, 1.8 kilowatts, so a uh, decent amount of power there. And we're going to use this because uh, what's got here are these basically these blades here, which basically press down into the line in neutral parts. And unlike the switch on the socket, which is good snap action, this thing definitely doesn't. So we can sort of slowly uh, press it in and uh, hopefully make a bit of an arc on the contacts here and of course over there. And this is going to be a uh, series arc, as basically it's in series with the piece of equipment. We're not going to be doing any parallel arcs here because that basically means that there'd be an arc between line and neutral something which is fairly likely to uh, trip it on overload or short circuit anyway, make a big bang as well and uh, not particularly safe. So what we'll do is turn on and then just see if we can get an arc in here and whether the thing will uh, be able to trip because of it. So uh, let's turn on the, uh, the power there. You can see the orange light is on. So uh, let's see what we can get. So I don't think I can hear that, but there is definitely some arcing going on in there. The thing is not tripping. Heater is on at full power. Well, there's certainly no uh, way of that thing's going to be tripping, and there was definitely some arcing going on in there, so uh, that's fairly uh, disappointing. Let's try it with a bit more load on the system. So we're going to add is this uh, heater here, which has got a fan in it, so a bit of uh, inductive load, though it's still mostly uh, resistive, of course. It's just uh, heating element with a fan added. So uh, we'll attach that into the uh, same thing here. This is probably going to be overloading the actual uh, fuse in the plug here, but never mind. Uh, something's going to fail at some point. Anyway, so uh, let's see uh, what we get this time. So we'll just turn on that just to start with. There's going to be a bit of noise because this obviously has a fan in it, so uh, Kind of inevitable that we're going to get a bit of noise coming out of there. So, yep, those are both on. So let's just see if we can get a bit of an arcing going on in this uh, switch once again.
Right, well it's finally tripped after a non-insignificant amount of effort there, so uh, we did, as uh, you may have heard, there's quite a bit of arcing going on there, so uh, eventually the uh, thing did trip, but uh, it certainly doesn't seem to be uh, particularly sensitive in terms of picking these up, so there was certainly a fair bit of arcing going on there, so uh, let's turn it on and then we we'll see what colour the uh, indicator is when it switches on, because remember before it has these uh, different codes here which will indicate the nature of the problem. So this is immediately after it's tripped, so we'll turn on, and then what we're supposed to see is the yellow one will flash anything between one and six times to indicate what the uh, previous problem was. So we'll just turn on. So that was two flashes there, fairly obviously. Yeah, it's just repeating it there twice, so again, two flashings. So do these things trip? Well, the answer is yes, they do eventually, and I say the load we had there was uh, around 14 amps or so, it was actually slightly overloading the uh, fuse in the plug there, and bear in mind this is only a 16 amp device, so uh, that was certainly at the upper end of the uh, operating current for it. Now of course if there's only a tiny load it's not likely to detect arcs particularly well, but you would expect it to be a bit more responsive at certainly that end, and certainly initially we could actually hear the arcing within that switch uh, fairly loudly, so yes it does trip on an arc, but uh, seems to take uh, quite a long time. Now, uh, as we saw there, it did detect that the uh, thing had arced, and it gave us two flashes, which, according to this uh, document, is a arc on something that's got a dimmer in it, so sort of some kind of lighting dimmer or some kind of switching type supply. That's not actually right either, because all we've got here is an electric heater and a fan heater, so uh, basically it's a big pile of heating elements and a very small amount of power for the actual fan motor, which is certainly not dimmed either. So, not entirely clear what that was on about, but... Uh, so it did eventually trip on that, and in terms of the RCD test there they were a pass, but certainly at the higher end, but uh, having tested uh, Eaton's or MEM as it was before that uh, many times before, they uh, all seem to be at the higher end of it, so that's not entirely unexpected. And I say that was a pass anyway, the maximum being 200, so 138 or whatever was uh, still well within. Now this video has gone on uh, long enough already, and the next time we'll have a look at some of the uh, dubious marketing materials from the various manufacturers, and also at the regulations to see what's actually written in there, and where these things are supposed to be used. So until next time, thanks for watching.